Hey, good morning, Lakes Community Church family. Pastor Gabe checking in with you here from my office, otherwise known as the youth room, which is actually where I do most of my office work, sitting right here in this chair. Uh, I like to be able to just look over and um, just think of all the amazing things that happen here in this building, and um, hopefully amazing things are happening for you in the buildings that you're in right now. Um, the church building is just a place. The church is us, the people, and so it's good to be able to come together with you um, and just you know, interact and engage through some of these different mediums, um, social media and those kind of things. So, hey, I wanted to share with you guys today um, a word, a name of God that is probably to me one of the more exciting names um, that God gives us and reveals to us of himself. And that's um, actually only used one time in the Old Testament. It's the, one of the last names. I think it's actually the last name God reveals himself as. Um, and that is um, Yahweh Shema. And so we're going to read just the verse that it's used, it's in Ezekiel, let me pull it up. And um, so it's in Ezekiel, it's the last, basically the last verse of Ezekiel, and it's talking about um, the New Jerusalem, this holy city, and, and, and God's presence, and the name of this city. So all of uh, Ezekiel chapter 48 is talking about, you know, what, what, what the city looks like, different gates, those kind of things. And then at the end here, while still explaining some of the um, you know, dimensions, these kind of things. It says, all the way around, this is verse 35 of Ezekiel 48, all the way around shall be 18,000 cubits, and the name of the city from that day shall be, and this is the, that name, um, the Lord is there, or that Yahweh Shema. And <clears throat> man, this has got to be great, especially if you give, again, real quick, just the context of then, um, you know, Ezekiel, he got to see in this vision, he got to see the presence of God actually leave the temple earlier on in um, chapters 8 through 11-ish, I think. Um, and then, of course, he got to see that come back. And so the people really, if, you, if you're considering the presence of God, had a dwelling place. It was in this temple. And so for them to have a promise, this is basically an eternal promise for them. You know, they had to probably have seen um, or thought with the destruction of the temple and, you know, they're captive in, in Babylon. This is really, they, they had to have been like kind of dwindling in their expectation of ever being able to have God's presence around. And so this is really a promise to them that says, no, God's presence is there, excuse me, in this new city that, that that's coming, God's presence is going to be there. And so, man, for them, what an encouragement, right? Like what a, um, what an exciting thing. And then, of course, when I think about our lives now, today, we think about the presence of God, you know, we're, we're, we're considering that God's presence actually dwells inside of us. Through Christ, he then sent us the Holy Spirit and, and said that the, the Holy Spirit actually dwells inside of us and that we have his presence available to us all the time, direct access. This is huge. I was just talking with a friend the other day about what it would have been like to walk around with Jesus and how amazing that must have been. I'm assuming that those people probably are looking at our lives and going, whoa, you have the presence of God in you? That's mind-blowing. That's out of this world. And so just as an encouragement for you, Real quick, again, don't want to get uh, too long in this, but um, to be encouraged that the presence of God is in you. God, God is here. He is, he's, he's here with us. He's with you right now in this moment. You don't have to come into a building. You don't have to read a Bible verse. You don't have to. None of those things are going to change God's presence in you if you've accepted Christ as your Savior. If you have that relational connection with him that says, okay, Lord, uh, Jesus, you're going to be my Lord. You're going to be the Lord of my life. I accept the gift that you've given to me of grace and of freedom from the destruction of my sin. And so uh, Yahweh Shema, God is there. God is here now. He's with us. He's inside of us. And what a great promise. What an exciting, exciting, especially in this time, um, in Ezekiel's time, what an exciting word, what an exciting revelation to the people to say, God is there. His presence is there. You don't have to worry about his presence being gone. It's a, it's a promise of eternal presence. And so we have that still to this day. And we have the presence inside of us. I'm so thankful for that. I hope you're thankful for that. I hope you're having uh, a wonderful day today. I know it's a little late. Sorry, I got a little late on sending this video out. I hope you're having a wonderful day. It's beautiful out today. Um, get outside. Think about the idea of God's presence living inside of you and enjoy his peace and his rest today. So love you guys. Really excited to getting back together with you soon. Uh, until then, please keep remembering to grow in this, not just get through this. I want to see people changed for the better through this. And so, um, yeah, I hope to see you soon. Talk to you later.